Let's have a look at case distinctions in SQL. And important keywords here are union to form the union of two tables, the case statement, and coalesce, which allows us to replace null values by some default value. The union operation allows us to combine the results of two queries. So the queries, they compute a table. So if for two queries, we obtain two tables, two relations, and the union forms the union of these two relations. The union is really necessary because we don't have any other means in SQL to construct a column by drawing from different tables. For instance, we need the union if we have two specializations of some concept that are stored in different tables. So for instance, you can think about that we have a concept course and we have specializations, undergraduate courses and graduate courses. If undergraduate courses and graduate courses are stored in different tables, but we want to make a query that combines them, that gives us one column that draws from both tables, then we need the union operation. Also the union operation is often used for a kind of case analysis, if then else. We will see an example of such a case analysis in the next slide. This slide shows an example use of the union operation. We want to compute the total number of homework points for every student. And the emphasis here is on every. Because we've seen the upper half of this query before, this gives us the total number of homework points for all the students that have submitted at least one homework assignment. But it leaves out all those students that have not submitted any homework assignment. Let's have a look at this query in the online system. Okay, so this is the query from the slide. Maybe let's start by looking at the upper part. The upper part gives us a table with the first name, the last name of the student, and the total number of homework points. But this table only lists those students that appear with a homework result in the results table, so that have submitted at least one homework. Now let's look at the lower part of this query. This gives us exactly the students that have not submitted any homework and they are assigned zero points. Let's see how this works. We are querying the students table and we are looking at those students where the student ID does not appear in the results table for a homework result. So that's all the students that have no homework results. And for these students, we output the first name, the last name, and zero as the total number of points. Okay, so now we are putting both tables together. The first table giving us all the students that have submitted the homework and the corresponding total number of points. The second query giving us all the students that have not submitted any homework and zero as the total number of points. And we are putting both together using union all. Now we have a table where all of the students appear, those that have submitted and those that don't have submitted any homework assignment. So this is indeed a table of all students with the corresponding sum of the homework points. This slide illustrates the use of the union operation for a kind of case distinction. We are using the union operation to assign grades to the students based on the homework run result. In each of the queries, we are joining the students and the results table on the student ID. We are looking only at the homework run results and 
we are filtering out students that have obtained a certain number of points. In the first query, we are only looking at those students that have obtained at least 9 points. And to those students, we assign grade A. The second query almost works in the same way, but now we are only looking at those students that have less than 9 points and at least 7 points. And to these, we assign grade B. Let's have a look how this query Let's first look at the first half of this query. Okay, so this joins the students and the results, looks at the homework one results, and only at those students that have at least nine points, and it assigns grade A. So this gives us a table of the student ID, the first name, the last name, and grade A for those students that have at least nine points. George Orville and Elvis Presley both have got 9 points for homework 1, so they both have grade A. Now the second half of the query almost does the same, but looks only at those students that have at least 7 and at most 8 points. I think there are no students that have this number of points. So maybe we are a bit more lenient. Let's say that we want to give grade B if there's at least five points. Then Lisa Simpson is among these students. So Lisa Simpson has obtained at least five points on homework one. So she now is assigned grade B. Now let's combine these two. So we are now combining the Grade A we assign for all students that have at least 9 points, and grade B we assign for all students that have at least 5 points and less than 9 points. And we are union, we're taking the union of the results. Now we have a table where George Orville and Elvis Presley have grade A, Lisa Simpson has grade B. So this is a kind of case distinction and we are putting the cases together using the union operation. When using the union operation to form the union of two queries, both queries must return the same number of columns, and the corresponding columns must have compatible data types. Here the correspondence of the columns is not defined via names, but we are positions of the columns. So the first columns have to match, the second columns have to match, and so on. SQL offers two different variations of the union column. Just union, which behaves like the set union, it ignores duplicates, it removes the duplicates. And the union all, which behaves like list concatenation, preserving the duplicates. Besides the union, SQL 92 offers also accept and intersect. As the name suggests, intersect is the intersection of the results of two queries, and accept is the set difference, it's all the results of A except the ones in B. Accept and intersect do not extend the expressiveness of SQL. The reason is that we can express these using exists and not exists. So for instance, we can say if we want to express except, we can take the query for A, so the first query, and we can express that we want all the rows of A and we extend A with an additional uh, condition in the where clause, that we exclude those rows that appear in the table B. So this excluding those rows that appear in the table computed by B can be done either with in or not in, or we can express this using exists or not exists by then also extending the subquery B with an additional condition what row we are looking for. The 
The union operation is the most portable way of doing case analysis in SQL. Union is supported by most database management systems. However, sometimes a conditional expression suffices and is more efficient. The syntax for conditional expressions unfortunately differs between database management systems. In the SQL 92 standard, we have the possibility of using these case expressions. So case, then when, then some condition, then a certain value is assigned. So here you see three cases with conditions when, and an else clause, so when all of these cases do not match, then an F is assigned. So let's have a look at this example. Here we are querying the students table and the results table. We are looking only at results that belong to the student, and we are looking only at homework one results. For the output, we select the student ID, and we are making case distinction based on the points for the homework one. If the points are greater or equal than nine, then we assign grade A. If the points are greater or equal to seven, but smaller than nine, we assign grade B. If the points are greater or equal to five and smaller than seven, we assign grade C. And if none of these clauses match, then we assign grade F. Let's test this query. Indeed, it gives us a table with the student ID and a grade based on the homework one result. And we can change a bit here. For example, if you say that grade C is assigned only from six point onwards, then student 103 is assigned grade F. So we are then in the else clause for student 103. A very common application of case distinctions in SQL is to replace null values by some other default value. So for instance, we might want to replace a null value by something human readable if we are producing a report that is to be read by humans. In SQL, we can do this using a case statement. We can say case when x is not null, then we keep x. And if x is null, so else, we use y. So y is the default value that we use for all the fields where the attribute value x is null. This is slightly long for something that is really very common use in SQL. So therefore there's an abbreviation. We can simply write coalesc xy. So coalesc xy will replace all those rows where x is null, will replace the value null by y. For instance, if we want to have the addresses of all the students, and we can query the students table. We select the first and the last name of the student. And because the address can be null, it can be unknown, not filled in the system. We use coalesc address unknown. So whenever the address is null, then the default value unknown will be filled, which is nicer to read for humans. For instance, in the students table, George Washington as an address null, so we didn't fill the address for George Washington. Now we can use the query from the slide. We replace the null values by unknown. And now this gives us the table where for the address for George Washington, unknown has been filled. 